you got mail. So a couple of months ago, I signed up for this GitHub Copilot preview thing, and I guess they finally got around to emailing me. So let's just open it up and see what it can do. So basically, it is just a VS Code extension, and you can see that there's this nice little icon on the bottom here. And what it is, is basically an autocomplete system, but it's powered by AI. So like unlike other autocomplete, it doesn't just fill in variable names or functions or like brackets. It actually can complete entire lines of code or functions just like on its own and try to guess what you're talking about, basically. So let's just create a new file. Let's say we create a JavaScript file. And here you can see that let's just declare a variable like let array equals, and then we can say one, two, three, four, and it will complete five and actually close the array like that. To give you another example, let's just try something a little bit more challenging. So how about I just say uh, make an array, and by using a, a for loop, uh, append all 128 ASCII characters into that array. So let's see what it does. And then it also sometimes auto-completes comments for you, which is a little bit weird, but all right. It says to then use the for loop to print out each character in the array, which is, I guess, what we want. And yep. So let's just make the for loop. Sometimes you need to get it started a bit. And now you can see it auto-completes this thing. The problem is that it didn't uh, make the array, I guess because I started with four. Let's just try that again. Let array equals that, and then auto-completes. Four, let that equals i less than 128. Let's see what it does. Array.push string dot from char code i. Great. And there's another for loop for printing it out. And let's see what it does. And it also does that correctly using the correct array names and everything. So how about I just save that file and see if that actually works. So how about we open up the terminal and just type node script.js, which is the name of the file. And you can see that it prints out everything, including the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the numbers, the parentheses, the everything, and all 128 characters, which is doing what we want. So this really, when you tell it what to do, it kind of saves you a bunch of time. And that's really the main purpose of GitHub Copilot. So according to the website, GitHub Copilot is powered by OpenAI, which is like an organization that makes a lot of cool AI stuff. And this AI that they use is, I believe, a modified version of GPT-3, which is like originally intended for generating language, right? Like human speaking language, like English and writing pieces of text and everything like that and understanding what people are supposed to say. I guess they somehow adapted it to generate code. And this means that they train it off something. And the thing that you, they used to train it on is the entirety of GitHub, kind of like they selected code from all of the open source repositories. And basically GitHub, the company has like a, access to like a huge amounts of code. And they use that to train this AI in autocomplete. And that means that you can use it to kind of kind of act as documentation. So it can, for example, use libraries. It can generate a lot of complex functions. So for example, let's say um, hash a string with um, SHA-256. And you can see that it suggests function hash. It actually completes something you're supposed to do. A problem with this is that it doesn't sometimes import the correct libraries. It doesn't, I'm not sure where this is from, but this is definitely not something that's like default in JavaScript probably. And also what you can do is, let's just give another example that's like a bubble sort, right? You can make a sorting function and then it actually completes everything and how the correct way to sort stuff. So basically this is really helpful, but because it is trained on other people's stuff, it can be problematic and it sometimes copies code that's either bad or like directly from some other person. So I tried it on my own and sometimes it completes stuff that's a little bit concerning. Like for example, if you say my password is, is sometimes this time it just doesn't do it, but sometimes it gives you like somebody else's password and yeah, or something like API key. And it gives you this, which is for open browser and I'm not sure if that's a real API key or it just made something up that looks like an API key, but I don't think that is good. So sometimes it does that, and I guess you have to be careful. One of the funniest examples is if you say like make a chatbot 
function let's say that accepts uh, input and returns the answer like what happens is that if we do function chatbot it kind of just like does this right so it kind of makes a bunch of if statements which is probably the worst chatbot ever but I guess it is something and if you say copy this and add your own input like what's up it can sometimes generate its own responses Resp return nothing much which is quite fun you can just like do this but also if you say who created you and ask that this time it says I was created by computer, but sometimes it actually names an actual person, which is a little bit concerning if I was gonna say that, because like you know it's copied basically directly from that person. The person might have not created this exact same chatbot, but it still names other people and other people's repositories, which is a little bit not good, I guess. But it's still pretty fun. So to give you a better idea of how helpful this is, let's just try to make an actual project from scratch and see how long that takes with the help of GitHub Copilot. And what we're going to do is basically make a very simple uh, to-do list website. So let's just do that and let's create the HTML file first. Title to-do list. And in the body, we can just create a header that says like to-do list. Oh, I guess Copilot does work because it just typed that. Hmm, but why is it using PHP? So that's the problem with HTML. But what we can do, I guess, also HTML comments are very weird, so it doesn't work as nicely as you would hope. So how about we just create like a div, and basically we should be done with HTML now. And this is what it shows. Okay, it's still trying to suggest to me uh, PHP. SRC script.js, all right. Nice. So how about let's create a class, so we can just type it, create a class, create a tasks class, with a title, description, and uh, completion. So it also completes the comments of what you want to do. So class, tasks, constructor, title, completed. This dot title, this dot completed, it's pretty simple. So we can just make this class, great. Make an array of two placeholder tasks for now. The tasks, new tasks, buy milk, buy some milk, false, and then another one, new task, buy x, buy some x, false, very creative names, it is very entertaining to use. Anyways, good place for the task. Let's make a function, function, render the task into the DOM, sure, in tasks container div. How about let's just take that function render tasks. Let's see what it gives you. Clear out existing tasks, task container dot empty, blah blah blah. That seems to work except it used jQuery. Let's try that again. How about loop through each of the tasks. Okay this time it actually used a non jQuery solution. So sometimes you have to try it a lot of times to see if it works well. We can also open Copilot. There's another window that you can open and it actually gives you more solutions, right? Different variations of the solution and see if it basically kind of works. And all of them seem pretty good. So let us click the first one. How about that? Works for me. Class task, h1 task.title, task i.description, task task.completed, checked. But we have to also make it so that when it's clicked, it actually toggles it. But let's just see what it does for now. In the end, there's an error. Ah, of course. Because there isn't a defer, so it kind of renders before it does. And you can see that it kind of actually works, except that the toggles don't do much yet. And also, it's arranged kind of weirdly. CSS, script.js. Style.css, that's what I meant. Make a comment. Sans serif font to everything. H1, uh, hmm, interesting. Okay, I guess that would make it a little bit more in everything is sans serif, but not sure if that's needed. 
but I guess that works. Uh, range tasks horizontally. UL, let's start type none. Nope. Let's give it a little bit more descriptive stuff. Arrange task div horizontally. So that actually works. Of course. Instead of tasks, it should just be task. Awesome. It kind of works. Great. Instead of fixing the part where this check thing doesn't actually update the class, how about let's just do another thing, which is uh, actually, you know, adding stuff. Button on click, we will call a function that we haven't created yet. Add task function to add tasks to tasks array. Function add tasks title description. Create a new task object with title and description. That task is a new task description false. That works. It also completes. Run the task into a DOM. Let's see. Okay. We almost completed it, but I guess we can do that by ourselves. Great. So it actually completed all of the complete part. I was not expecting that they would also consider the update and rendering part, but I guess they did consider that. So that's great. Prompt for title and description. The title, the description. Awesome. Hello, world. And it actually adds it in. And here is where I'm going to end the project. I know it's ridiculously simple and there's a little bit parts that it didn't fix. But you can see how it kind of gets and learns from context. And hopefully you can see how GitHub Copilot performs. So one final thing before I wrap it up is that in case you were wondering that when it goes out, you can only use it on VS Code, there's actually a few more editors that it supports. It currently also supports NeoVim and JetBrains IDE. So stuff like PyCharm and you know IntelliJ like IDEA and also other ones like WebStorm. So those would all work with that. I haven't gotten the JetBrains stuff to work yet, but I did get NeoVim to work and it's pretty cool. Okay, so in conclusion, here are my thoughts about GitHub Copilot. So basically, it is an extremely powerful and cool auto-completion system using AI. And really cool it is all that there is. And it is like really impressive at predicting everything, and as you can see, it generates entire functions. And I feel like it is something that I'll definitely be using later in my personal projects, and I have actually used them for a few, and it has helped in like slight places when I'm doing somewhat repetitive like tasks or helper functions that I don't really care about. But really it is nothing revolutionary. It's not like when you get your hands on this, your programming experience will change that much. It is just like a good text editor or like a good autocomplete, like just like any other quality of life thing. That's really all there is. It's not gonna like replace any programmers at least in this stage because its accuracy rate is not that high. Like once in a while it gets something completely wrong and then it just like messes everything up so you have to definitely review the code and actually know how stuff works also you have to be able to connect everything together and see what it's actually doing because you can't just say like give me an app and make me money and copy facebook and you it will actually just do that so it's like it's only for somewhat pretty small chunks of code that it actually works well but when it does work well it is really really cool and basically that's all there is it's just cool so I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you liked it, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.